Hi Year 9, welcome back to lesson 2, hope you're all well. As I mentioned before, we're going to start each lesson with a bit of a quick fire round, looking back on what you should have learned and revised last week. So all of these questions are about our UK case study, which hopefully you completed, have looked over, memorised all that information. So on a scrap bit of paper, uh, lined, planed, whatever you've got handy, can you have a go at these five questions without looking at your fact sheet? Try and do it without, see what you can remember, and then you can go back, check what you wrote down and add in any more detail. Off you go. Here is a completed copy of the UK fact sheet that you guys completed last week. This is to give you a bit of an idea of the detail that we're after when you're completing these case studies. Use this time to pause the video, read through this example, compare it to the one that you created. If you feel that your example is missing anything, then feel free to use some of this to add in and improve it. And also just use it to just double check some of your answers. So I don't expect the key facts from the UK to be exactly the same because we may have used different websites, but just checking that they're in the same ballpark. So pause the video, read through this example, read through the one that you created last week and just double check that they're of a similar standard. Okay, lesson two then. Our case study for this week is India. So what you'll need is your fact book, hopefully you've got that with you, uh, a pen or something to write with and some scrap paper. Before I begin this week's lesson, what I want you to do is have a look at this video clip that explains uh, a lot of things and it's a really good introduction to India. And as you're watching it, feel free to make notes in your fact book sheets about the climate that it mentions it also talks about the location and there's some key facts that you could put into that box as well so it's on bbc bite size if you follow that link at uh, where it's in the task box then you should be able to find it it's about five minutes so have a watch of that fill in any information that you think is relevant as you go and then we'll continue with the lesson here we come to the location of india now, it was mentioned on the video whereabouts it was, so hopefully you picked up some of the things that the narrator said. But what I want you to try and get in the habit of using is this clock idea that I introduced last week. So including these five factors when we're describing a particular place in terms of its location. Now, to help you out, I've labelled onto this map the equator and the Tropic of Cancer, which is where those pinky arrows are pointing to. So they are examples of lines of latitude, if you can try and include those in your description. And India is the green country in the middle of the map uh, that I've underlined in, again, a pinky red, just so you're really sure about where it is. Okay, have a go at your description, then I'll give you a few pointers to make sure you've included them. Okay, so definitely making sure that we've included the latitude of the equator is to the south of India and the Tropic of Cancer runs through towards the north of India. Hopefully you included some oceans and seas. So you could have said that the Indian Ocean is to the south of India or you've got the Arabian Sea to the west. We've also got countries nearby such as China to the northeast. We've got Pakistan to the northwest, Sri Lanka to the south. Any of those, you've hopefully included some examples of countries. And finally, the continent uh, that India is in is Asia. So making sure that we've got that in a sentence as well. So if you've missed any of those ideas out, can you go back and improve your answer before you move on? Moving on to key facts and our development indicators then. At the top is the website that I use to get a lot of this information if you struggled to find the stuff on the UK last week. Here's a good one to try. Just a bit of context then whilst you're doing this research. India has the second largest population in the world. It's in the billions when you're looking for that number. Life expectancy. As good geographers, you should start being comparing and contrasting the different bits of information that you're gathering. So does it vary for men versus women? How does it compare to the UK one that you created last week? India is also a really, really big country. So its area, its landmass, um, it's the seventh largest country in the world when you're looking at that number. The GNI uh, per capita 
is divided by the amount of population and India has this huge population. So this average you might think is relatively low for India. However, India has these huge extremes. So it has really, really wealthy people, but also really, really poor people. So don't go away thinking that India is this poor country. It's not at all. You've got billionaires and millionaires that live there amongst people that are living in slums. Finally, the HDI for India is 129 out of 189. I think the UK was around about 15. So why is it that India is so far behind the UK in terms of its development? As good geographers, you should start thinking about these ideas, thinking, well, why is one country considered a high income country and another country considered a low income country? Or what makes a country a newly emerging economy? All of those types of things. So pause the video, spend some time finding out these different pieces of information. Okay, next up is climate. And when I was putting this lesson together, it was really, really tricky to think about what I could cover in terms of climate because India is really, really diverse. And depending where you live or where you might visit, you might experience really, really different types of weather and climate when you're there. So as you can see from this info on the right hand side, all the different colours are indicating a different type of climate that you might get there. So some places might be warmer or colder than other places. Some places might be wetter, might be drier. So it really differs to the UK that we have kind of similar weather. We don't get particularly warm or particularly cold. We never really see extremes. Whereas in India, because of where it is, its place in the world, uh, you do see a lot more of these extreme climates. So, for example, there's a desert in India which obviously is quite hot but doesn't really get much rainfall. You've then got a, a mountain range, the Himalayas that they mentioned in the video towards the north of the country and here you might get um, tundra and glaciers, so really really cold climates. Then towards the bottom, towards the south of the country, you're going to get really really tropical climates and rainforests, so they're going to be humid, so they're going to be really really hot but they're also going to be quite wet. And India is quite well known for this monsoon season that it has from June to September, where it gets this really, really heavy rain every single day. And whilst it's great for a lot of the farmers um, to be able to work on their land and grow crops, uh, it can also cause things like flooding and really impact people. Again, they showed this a bit on the, on the video. So I didn't want to bore you and bombard you with lots of information on this slide. So instead, what I'd recommend you doing is picking just one climate to focus on or spotlight on um, and speaking a bit more about that. So you might want to speak about the north, the south, the east, the west, maybe pick a particular location within India and then look at that in a bit more detail um, because it is so varied. So have a go at that. Off you go. Similar to climate, ecosystems was quite tricky to think about uh, what you could include. So instead, I've given you three suggestions of ones that you might want to explore. So we've got a desert, a grasslands and a rainforest. Now, if you think about this varying climate, then it makes sense that we're going to have different ecosystems too, because plants are going to need different circumstances to thrive. Animals are going to need different types of habitats. Um, to be able to live in those circumstances. So for this particular task, what I would like you to do is consider these five ideas when you've picked your particular ecosystem. So whereabouts is it located in India? What are the abiotic and biotic elements of the ecosystem? So the living and non-living things that make it up. Uh, are there any adaptations that your plants or animals have had to make to survive in that particular environment? And are there any unique or interesting facts about your particular ecosystem? So pause the video and have a go at researching one of those three that I've detailed there. Okay, we'll move on and look at industry and multinationals then. So here we've got a pie chart of the different employment sectors in India. Now, last week on the lesson, I explained the difference between primary, secondary, tertiary types of jobs. So if you can't remember that or you've forgotten, then go back to last week's lesson and go to that slide where I explained them in a bit more detail. 
but we can see that their makeup of India is quite different to the UK. Their primary uh, sector is that pinky reddy colour, is somewhere between a half and a third, which is much, much more than the UK. And their tertiary sector is definitely less than what we have here in the UK. So that indicates why we've got different levels of development between India and the UK. So research now a bit more specifically what a breakdown of those numbers looks like, but that's a kind of general idea of what you're looking for. Now, if we move on to the different multinationals, here's a bit of a wordle of different companies that you can find in India. Some of them are Indian multinationals. Some of them are from elsewhere, but have offices, factories, uh, buildings in India because they are multinational. So even if they're American, they might have offices over there. So completing that box on your fact sheet of a list of maybe four or five different examples of Indian multinationals and international multinationals that have offices in India. Next up then is trade. So in front of you, we've got this quite nice infographic of India's top imports and India's top exports. Now, remember, an import is something that they buy in to the country. It's imported in things that they need that they don't necessarily have, whereas exports are things that they sell to different countries um, because they're able to make it or they have that resource in their country. So you can see that there's some similarities between things that they're importing and exporting. However, there are some differences. So for example, they're exporting clothes that you can see there at the bottom, whereas they are importing uh, chemicals. So add on to your fact sheet some examples of things that India is importing and some examples of things that they are exporting. If there's anything on there that you don't understand or you're unfamiliar with, then definitely give it a bit of a search to find out a bit more what exactly it means and what it means in terms of India. If we look next at global cities, remember a global city isn't necessarily a capital city or the biggest city. It's just seen as a global city by others, whether that's for financial reasons or trade reasons. Remember thinking of some of the things we looked at with London last week. So does India have any? Well, it depends who you speak to, where you look and what factors you consider. Some people might argue that Mumbai is a global city, whereas some are saying that it's not really in the same league as places such as London and New York just yet. Now, I found an article online um, that said things such as going forward, Mumbai is expected to be the fastest growing city in terms of wealth growth over the next 10 years and that it's home to 45,000 millionaires and 28 billionaires. So it's the economic hub of India and home to the Bombay Stock Exchange. So from that information, we can gather that Mumbai is financially important, but does that make it a global city? So looking at your box on your fact sheet, the question I want you to try and answer is, is Mumbai a global city? So do some research, see where it falls in different league tables and come to your own conclusion as to whether you think it is a global city or not quite yet. Off you go. And finally, we come to our interesting facts. Now, I thought there was quite a lot on the video that you watched at the start of this. But if you're still missing some uh, from having done all your research on climate and ecosystems and things you might have found out there, here are five that I have added, but feel free to use these or come up with your own if you've not already managed to get a few to fill in in that box. So if you didn't know the capital of India is New Delhi, often you'll hear people talk about Mumbai and Mumbai being the financial uh, sort of hotspot of India. However, the capital is New Delhi. There's 23 official languages in India, and that includes English and Hindi. 80% of Indians are Hindu. You can find the Taj Mahal, one of the seven wonders of the world in India. Absolutely amazing. Uh, if you've not seen it or aren't familiar with what it looks like, definitely Google it. And it's the only country in the world where both lions and tigers live. So add those to your fact sheets or do a bit of extra research to make sure that that box is complete. 
Okay, we've made it to the end of lesson two, year nine. Well done. So what do you need to do next? We'll make sure that all of your fact sheets are complete. Go back through this lesson, pause at different points, maybe watch the video from the start again to make sure that you've got as much detail as possible. Remember the example of the UK that I showed at the start? That's the level of detail that we are after. Once all of that is done, you then need to try and learn all the information that you've built up. So read through each section, maybe break it down that you just do one section a day to make it more manageable. Then maybe ask someone at home to quiz you on different facts to make sure that you have remembered all of that different information. This is really important because we're going to begin next week's lesson looking back at all of the information that we've covered on India. Well done for your hard work today, year nine, and I'll see you for lesson three next week.